to the Prophecy Club. We're going to continue talking with Jim Wilhelmson today. For some 20 years, he's been researching UFOs and aliens from a Bible prophecy standpoint, and sad to say, yes, they have a lot to do with our future and with Bible prophecy. He actually lived in Roswell for four years, so he had a first-hand investigation experience. Now, get a load of this. He has interviewed, not just interviewed, but prayed with. He has a ministry, I think I would say a primary ministry, of praying and getting people past abduction experiences. So today, I know that it's be hard for some Christians to understand, but look, he was there. He's done that. He's interviewed over 100 people that have been abducted. So with this guy, you can't say that's foolishness, that's rubbish, because he's got so many examples, he will talk you into the dirt. As a matter of fact, he was abducted, and he's going to tell us about that experience today. And yes, it does have to do with the Bible and with Bible prophecy and with the future and with the fall of America, the rise of the new world order and the return of Jesus. It's a major, major part. Matter of fact, I think it's the great deception. OK, so, Jim, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Well, thank you for having me. It's good to be here. OK, let's start with the question. Are abductions real? It defines my childhood. It's what has allowed me to be able to know and understand how to help others terminate their experiences. I'd have to say yes. It's it's so real that many times when people want to debate and argue about are these things real, it's like I just have to walk away. It's like I am so far beyond that. Yeah, I mean, okay. I deal, I deal it all started back all with time. what President uh, Truman, I believe it was, with the Majestic 12, where there was an agreement reportedly signed between the president and these aliens allowing them to do experiments in return for technology, them giving our government technology. Now, that's obviously hard to prove, but there's a lot of people believe that. Do you think that's true? Things even back in the medieval times where people were spirited away by fairies and they went to a castle in the heaven, and they give a complete description of almost what a modern-day alien abduction would be. As far as an official policy, as far as happening in mass quantities the way it is right now and has been, there's a transition point in history. In the first early days of right after World War II, people starting having contacts with right. uh, aliens, but it was physical cognitive contacts, and they called them contactees. Right around 1961, we had the Betty and Barney Hill case where so-called gray aliens had kidnapped them. It's funny they saw a Nazi officer with the gray aliens, but you don't hear that too much. They It pops out every now and then, but it's part of the transcripts of them recounting you know, the situation. But that it they didn't had. used to happen, and now it happens. Okay, so tell us, what is a typical experience, then what happened to you? Okay, well, you know, probably mine is uh, much milder than some, but I can use mine as an example because some of the main high points are there. When I was a kid, I would remember hearing a buzzing in my ears, and I'm thinking, oh boy, I'm going to have one of them science fiction dreams again. And part of it was fun because I liked these dreams, but the other part was scary because the next thing would happen, I would go to bed that night, then all of a sudden I would sense or feel a presence at the foot of my bed. Others, the way they're in bed, all of a sudden a bright bluish light, and it's consistent. It's always a bright bluish light usually, or a bright white light will come in through the window. They'll either see the little gray alien or whatever outside the window or at the foot of their bed. In my case, I'm laying in bed and then I sense a presence and almost like a whispering in my head. And uh, it was uh, all I saw was what we call the shadow people. You could only see them out of the peripheral edges of your uh, sight. You couldn't actually directly see anything. At that time, I'd be so scared I'd put the blanket over my head. And then I felt like I was either floating or I would fall asleep. I don't know whether they were inducing that or what, but many people at that same time experience the sleep paralysis where they can't move, they can't speak, they can't do anything. Some at that point actually know of being floated up off the air, out of the bed, even right through a, either an open window or right through the wall itself and then into a craft that's usually hovering right up above. In my situation, I was so scared that I would put the covers over my head. I would like pass out or, you know, just that was it. I was asleep. But then I would have my science fiction dream. I was abducted by the what they call the Nordics. I wasn't abducted by the Greys, so I didn't have all the horrendous, scary medical things going on with me. It was more of a mind manipulation. What triggered it off is I went to a, a MUFON convention, Mutual UFO Network, that was in my hometown and was in 1997. 
And I heard testimony of two people and they would had been taken the same way with the same group. They were made to turn a box inside out with their mind. Soon as I heard that, bam, I had a flash and I remembered, oh my gosh, I remember arguing with those guys. What had happened, they wanted me to turn this box inside out and I was sitting there going, and I was, you know, kind of feisty and argumentative. And I said, no, this isn't fair. Why am I here? I got a big test tomorrow morning and I want to do good in life. I want to get good on my tests. And it's not fair that I should have to be here because I'm not getting any sleep and I need my sleep. I don't want to do this stupid game. And I remember looking around and almost all the kids that were in my classes were there with me. And that was kind of a strange one. Well, what would happen then is I would just simply uh, be like a flashback in bed. I just would wake up and a lot of times uncontrollable news, nosebleeds. Um, later on, I found out that there was a couple of marks on my arm and then one in my left arm and one in my back they were like what they call scoop marks where skin had actually been taken and scooped out. And these are DNA samples. What I later found out, I had this little lump thing in my head and I kept wondering, what is that? Well, as the Lord had called me into understanding this and understanding anal abduction, and I realized that, that every, see, everything that I had experienced was nothing but kids' bad dreams, you know, a monster in the closet, under the bed, that kind of thing. So when I grew up later, I just never made the association that this stuff was even real. It was just some kid's imagination. And that's the biggest trick that they do. They make most people believe they just had a bad dream or they had a dream. And so they just take a real conscious, passive idea to the whole thing. That's where it's tricky. There are indications how a person can come out of that or find out that they did have. And most of it is they'll suffer some kind of post-traumatic syndrome, unable to sleep, or they'll see the, just a gray alien and just get the creeps automatically without knowing why. And I was what they call a throwaway. For some reason, they were done with me at about uh, 12, 13 years old. I was being abducted from about five years old to about 12 years old, and there was no more. But after that, it's so typical is most people that have been abducted will have electrical anomalous situations go with them. I mean, they'll actually walk down the street and lights will turn off or they'll walk down the street and lights will turn on. And when they pass by, it's reversed. There's some kind of a residual effect, I think, uh, within people. I had a situation where I was unplugging, uh, I was a foreman of a shop and I was unplugging someone's radio because it was way too loud. And I unplugged it and it was still running. And as soon as I dropped the cord, because it kind of surprised me, it stopped. Some people will experience, start experiencing in their lives some kind of a psychic abilities, whether they are able to know what another person's thinking or out-of-body travel was the problem that I had. I had it for three or four different times until I became a Christian. Then I just rebuked it in the name of Jesus because I just inherently knew that it was wrong. The Holy Spirit was there to let me know it was wrong. Um, okay, how about the nosebleeds? In other words, do you think you got implanted with something, some kind of a tracking device in your nose or some of those other scratch marks on your body? Have you been x-rayed to see if you have any kind of implants? You know, I showed him a little lump in my head and he says, we're going to get you know, hooked up right now. So, you know, I went and, and uh, he examined me. Everything came out positive. When they took the x-ray, the little lump there was just nothing more than just a skin growth. So it wasn't the actual implant. The thing that's typical in all of them is that almost everybody doesn't fully realize at the time that they had an abduction. They've just had bad dreams. And when they tell me the bad dreams in conjunction with like one example, a woman who was a Christian, whose husband was a missionary, was overseas on a mission. I think it was going to be a total of six months. She had become pregnant. She had no sex. It was impossible for her to be pregnant. So she was torn apart. How is she going to tell her husband what's going to go on? What's going to happen? She had a, a dated ultrasound to show the date and everything. And when it happened three months later, her pregnancy is terminated. She went and got a CAT scan with a date on it. But only three months later, there was a torn egg sac and the remains of a placenta. So she was obviously pregnant. But again, now in just three months time, it's gone. That is a typical thing for most women. They're artificially inseminated or they having sex performed on them during the abduction. They get pregnant and then three months later, in gestation period, they're taken again and the, the fetus is removed. Okay, well, you, you, what do you mean you say sex performed on them when they're abducted? Are we talking about just some kind of an insertion device? Are we talking about the old-fashioned way? Well, some of them um, are actually experiencing other men or other women that come to them and they're told that they're to have sex. So these are the rare occasions. Those aren't as common. Most of them are medical, clinical, outside. They're artificially inseminated. Okay, these other men or women, are these just other abductees or are these hybrids or what are these? I think most cases they're other abductees 
that are being coupled together. They're doing a genetically controlled program. Many times we find that some of the individuals are actually family, generational, the same things are happening. So, if See, I think one- what they're trying to do is trying to make a hybrid. In other words, Jesus genetically was half Mary, half God, okay, half human, half God. So that's the reason Jesus could say he was the son of man, but he was also the son of God, because genetically he was. Now, the devil doesn't do anything new. He just takes what God does and does it in reverse. So that makes sense to me that the Antichrist would be half man, half Lucifer. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Matter of fact, Daniel says they will mingle the seed with the seed of men. What do you think? When you understand everything is happening in the same but opposite, it'll all start making sense. The only reason I'm able to connect a lot of these dots is because that was foundational truth that God had spoken to me, said everything is being done in the same but opposite. So absolutely that's what's going on, Stan, is that that, um, they're creating a hybrid, but the hybrid is only a bridge. Susie was a, a friend of mine. She lived in Roswell. Okay, Susie was a preacher's kid. Susie was always having bad dreams. And these little stick men were coming into the bedroom and, and they were scaring her. When she went to her first examination at 12 years old, first menstrual period and everything, the doctor pulled her aside in another room away from her parents and says, okay, Susie, when did you get pregnant? And she says, I'm a virgin. I'm a pastor's kid. I, you know, I'm a good girl. I'd never done anything like that before. And he was insistent. He was adamant. He says, no, you are not a virgin and you've had a child. And it just tore her apart. I mean, she was only 12 years old. So this guilt carried with her all the way to her life until she was 39 when I met her. We'll be right back after this message. The June speaker at the Prophecy Club is Jim Wilhelmson. He's going to be speaking on America's Destiny, Tribe of Dan, and the Three Frogs. Topics will be understanding the biblical terms for America. A kingdom removed, a scepter change. The tribe of Dan in America. All about the three frogs of Revelation 16. A history showing America is Babylon. How UFOs relate to a cosmic Christ. Thursday, June 4th, 7 to 10.30 p.m. The next one is the clouds of heaven and UFO abductions. Topics are, what did Ezekiel see? The book of Enoch, interesting physics. UFOs, Satan's plan to replace Christ with the Antichrist. The history of Nazi UFOs and why they lost the war with this amazing high technology. The Nazi trail after the war's end. Where did the UFOs go? Antarctica? The alien vehicles, message, occupants, and abduction experiments are the same as form a Nazi agenda. The reasons for abductions. Friday, June 5th, 7 to 10, 30 p.m. The next talk is Biblical Time Travel, a new meaning to the end times. Topics are Time Travel is Possible. Threats that can only be explained with time travel. Heaven is outside of time. What is time? Time travel found in the Bible. Two lies of Eden, a counterfeit eternal realm. Ancient knowledge from the past and the Tower of Babel. Daniel 8 and the Nazi time travel technology. The real history fulfills Bible prophecy. God's control measure in how time is a weapon. The Kecksburg and Stephenville cover-up. Saturday, June 6, 3 to 6 p.m. Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? Can this be compatible with modern plate technology and science? Lazarus and the rich man. Where was Cain sent? Where is paradise and Eden related to Abraham's bosom? Where did Jesus go after his death? Where do demons live and how did they get there? How does CERN, the Devil's Triangle, and the Dragon Sea relate? How does the Nazi expedition and claim of an alliance with, quote, pure Aryans play into this? Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? That's Saturday, June 6, 7 to 10, 30. So that is four meetings, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, June 4, 5, and 6. A gift of $10 at the door for each meeting, but the best deal is take advantage of our summer blowout. Single DVD, gift of $30, two, gift of $50, four, gift of $85, that's $21 each, seven, gift of $120, that's $17 each, 10, gift of $100, that's $10 each, 20 DVDs, gift of $160, that's only $8 each. But you got to call 785-266-1112. Offer expires soon. That's 785-266-1112 for the summer blowout gift offer. All meetings are at the Prophecy Club, Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the Whataburger. That's 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the Whataburger, on the corner of Park and K, like the margarine. And I'll look for you at the meetings. And now, back to the program. This guilt carried with her all the way to her life until she was 39 when I met her. And I was able to start telling her, no, I know what this is. 
this is an abduction. So I started working with her. There's two parts to what I work with people. One is to be able to take authority to make these things stop abducting you. The other one is to close the wounds, the, the hurts, the open door that you've left in your own mind. This is the hard part for some people because they don't want to come to grips with the fact that they're not just a total innocent victim. These demonic entities are very legalistic and they find hurts or wounds. They'll exploit that. They'll stand on the ground. And that's how we got to look into ourselves to find out where these hurts are. I worked with her. We found out that she was allowing these things to happen because she felt that she had to learn more so she could help others. And I said, "Hun, the only thing you got to learn is to make these things go away and never come back again. They're liars. There's nothing they're going to tell you that's of any worth or value. So as I was working with her, I also got a chance to meet him. He became fascinated with the whole UFO alien topic. Unfortunately, at the time when he was interested, there wasn't anything from a biblical perspective out available for him. So he was getting involved in the UFO community party. One of the reasons why they moved to Roswell, because that was like the mecca of all things UFO and alien. And it actually drew the entities to him. He was having the same kind of experiences. I worked with him a little bit. You know, he was getting the same entities, the same experiences that he was able to repent he realized that he'd opened a door up for his family, for his children to actually suffer the same kinds of things. He ended up passing away uh, a month later, and all of a sudden, no more abductions from anyone in the family. That was like part of one of the open doors. But with Susie, once she realized that she didn't have to keep enduring this to help others, um, she had a full termination, never to be bothered again. Dan was probably the most extreme case I've ever had. I didn't even know when he first called me that I could even help Dan was not a Christian. He was living with his 80-some-year-old father in a room, a little bedroom, most of the time in a fetal position, terrified to death, couldn't go outside uh, because of that fear that was building up. Dan was driving down one of the mountain roads in California, and he saw this huge orb-type UFO. He saw about eight other little small orbs floating around by it, and then it, all the little ones went into the big one. He was looking at it and trying to drive and, and look at the same time and realize he couldn't do that. So he took his eyes off of it. All of a sudden, a bright light hit the car. The next thing he remembers, he's about an hour down the road, way farther than where he was supposed to be. So he turned around, went back home. A couple days later, these orbs started coming into his room. They were tormenting him. He was getting afraid, frightened to death as soon as they would show up started ruining his life. He was afraid to go to work. He was afraid to do anything. He lost his wife, lost his children, lost even visitation, lost his job. Let's address the fear. Why are you afraid? Are they actually hurting you? No, they aren't. Okay, then just look at it as a free light show. Okay, now so essentially find... every one of these is an abduction experience that is heading to some kind of a genetic experience. Yes. Some kind of an experiment, trying to yes. make a hybrid. Every one of them. Now, I understand that there's been over one million people that have reportedly reported that they have been abducted. Is there really that many, in your opinion? There's far much more than that. We're probably talking hundreds of thousands. If any of you, now, each one of these indications doesn't necessarily mean that you've been a victim. But when you have multiple two, three, four symptoms, you have been abducted. I don't see bugs under every rock. I usually approach every case with a bit of skepticism. I've had many cases where people are, problem is that they're living on the bottom of a bottle and, you know, or they got to quit smoking the wacky tobacco or something that, you know, there's other problems that are more predominant than being uh, abducted by aliens. Some people use that as an excuse because the devil made me do it. Or actually some are hoping that they'll be on the next movie on abductions or documentary or something. And I don't do that. I keep them anonymous. The fact is that there are so many, there's a consistency. So let's say that if you have had uncontrollable nosebleeds, this isn't just a childhood normal thing. It really isn't. But yet it is because most kids are having it. Why? Because most of them are being abducted. If you've had these bad dreams of stickmen, pumpkinhead people, I mean, you name it. I mean, I've, I've heard it all from different people. Uh, one guy told me that back before before I was ever involved in any of this and knew anything about it in counseling, I had one gal that said that these stickmen used to come and visit her at night. I had another guy that said that these pumpkin head people used to come in at night and scare them. You know, another person called them like ghosts, only they were physical. So there's a lot of different names, but it's all the same kind of thing. So if missing had, time. If you've had missing time. If you saw a UFO and you can't remember anything more about it, or if you saw it and you had such a passive way of not saying anything to anyone until maybe a year down the road. When I was interviewing at the Stevensville Lights situation that we're going to be covering in the, on the very last talk that I have, sec no, the time travel one, this gal saw two orbs flying over her house and two jets flying after them. 
And she didn't bother letting her husband know until about um, eight days later. Like it was no big deal. Now, I've been doing this too long. I know she got grabbed. She was taken. I know she was. I bet you if I, I checked her body, she probably has some scoop marks. Fortunately, they didn't artificially inseminate her or anything like that. But there's different stages and different levels. And it's they seem to be, with everybody they take, the one thing that is common is that there's a scoop mark somewhere on your body probably. Okay, got a question. Implant. Now, I think I remember you saying that these things cannot like launch, that the UFO cannot launch a missile or they don't have a uh, phaser ray gun. In other words, they can't actually send out anything like damaging uh, to like blow up a house or to kill right. you or they, something like that. Did right. I hear that? Now, now light, there, there does seem to be, now that we have laser and we have that kind of technology, that does seem to be able to go through both gravitational fields. But a conventional bomb, a missile, a bullet, no. That, okay, that so can't happen. What, what happens if one of these guys just happens to be flying over an M1A1 Abrams tank and one of the guys decides to aim up one of those uh, projectiles that's made of depleted uranium and fires it at a UFO, would it actually hit it or how, what would happen? In most cases, no. It seems like they do have the old Star Trek force field up and it will bounce off or just explode without any damage to the vehicle. Okay, so then you're saying these guys can control your mind, they can come in in the middle of the night, abduct you, rape you, whatever they want to do, you might or might not even remember it, and then we have absolutely no defense, we have, that is outside the, of the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, but in terms of we can't fire a weapon at them, we can't stop them, these guys could take over the world, and that's sort of what the Antichrist does in the last days, when you can call yep. fire out of the sky in the face of all men, when he's in the presence of the first beast. You know the reason why they don't do it right now, just take us over? They have to have our permission so that all this stuff is going to happen as a seduction. They have got to bring us to a point where we want what they have to offer. And well, by golly, they're going to do it. Well, you know, as you said, the abduction didn't start until about 61, 1961. And that's right after, reportedly, there was a Majestic 12 meeting with the president that reportedly gave them permission to do so. So it would make sense to me that when the false prophet points over to the beast, the Antichrist, and says, this is divinity, you've got to worship him, he is really God, and as people start worshiping him, this whole thing is about to explode. I know, look, to the average person listening, look, I know how this sounds, I understand, but if you know your Bible, if you have really thoroughly read it, if you understand Bible prophecy, you understand this is not a joke. This is not a little trivial thing we're talking about. This is something that can cost you your soul. Amen? Yes, amen. I'm going to read Jude 12. It says, These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of the winds and seas whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, wandering stars, whose there's everlasting darkness. They're telling us that these entities are spots within our feast. They're in the feast in the Jewish frame set is that's the most intimate relationship that you can have with another person is during the, a feast festivity. They're saying that in the most intimate parts of relationship, they are spots in that relationship. They are clouds without water, now, how can you be a cloud without water? Water makes a cloud. So it's something with form without substance. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Explain that one. They've been dead once. Now they're brought back. And now they're wandering stars, whom's reserved everlasting darkness. Wandering. Where are they wandering? How they're wandering? That will be covered in the time travel part. But these are entities that are not human beings. They are non-human beings in our midst right now, steering us toward a one world religion, one world economic system, and a one world religion. They are the ones, I'm, I'm sure you can turn on the History Channel, and whenever they have any Bible story things on there, the secret, uh, forbidden books of the Bible and all this garbage, some of those people are not people. They are contending against the faith, and they're doing it on the highest levels. I'm sure that they're filling up our biblical institutions. It's why most of the church is asleep to all of this, because they're being instructed, leaded, and guided by people that aren't even human. That's why Jude sums up that we can't even contend with these entities in our own strength and power. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. I find it amazing that these so-called aliens 
consistently. I don't care whether a reptile type, the dolphin type, the insect type, or the tall blonde haired blue eyed Nordic type. They all have one common thing that they always tell us. They always tell us that we have the Jesus of the Bible wrong. They say, oh, you know, he's real and, you know, he was one of us and, you know, he's part of us or, or whatnot. But the Jesus of the Bible, we have wrong. I sit there and laugh. I think it's funny because the Jesus that they say I have wrong is the very Jesus that makes them go away and they can't do what they want to do. Especially when I'm doing the New Age shows, I think, guys, don't you think maybe they're lying to you? You're coming to me because you want help, but I'm telling you that the Jesus of the Bible is the only thing that I can, I, it's not a formula method system or principle. It is a person. It is your creator. It is your Lord. Amen. I can give you him and he can make these things stop. Amen. All right. Well, brothers and sisters out there, uh, very interesting talking with Jim Wilhelmson. Want to encourage you to come and hear him. He is talking, making four DVDs, four meetings, Thursday, Friday, and then two on Saturday, June 4, 5, and 6. That's Thursday, Friday, and two on Saturday, June 4, 5, and 6. And we'll tell you more about it in just a minute, or you can go to prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your monthly support. God bless. Brothers and sisters, God wants us to help his side win the battle for souls. The Prophecy Club is on the tip of God's spear. Join the battle and prayerfully consider supporting the Prophecy Club with your gifts of support. We would not be here without your prayers and generous financial support. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. The June speaker at the Prophecy Club is Jim Wilhelmson. He's going to be speaking on America's Destiny, Tribe of Dan, and the Three Frogs. Topics will be understanding the biblical terms for America, a kingdom removed, a scepter change, the Tribe of Dan in America, all about the Three Frogs of Revelation 16, a history showing America is Babylon, how UFOs relate to a cosmic Christ, Thursday, June 4th, 7 to 10.30 p.m. The next one is The Clouds of Heaven and UFO Abductions. Topics are What did Ezekiel see? The Book of Enoch. Interesting physics. UFOs. Satan's plan to replace Christ with the Antichrist. The history of Nazi UFOs and why they lost the war with this amazing high technology. The Nazi trail after the war is in. Where did the UFOs go? Antarctica? The alien vehicles, message, occupants, and abduction experiments are the same as form a Nazi agenda. The reasons for abductions, Friday, June 5th, 7 to 10, 30 p.m. The next talk is Biblical Time Travel, a new meaning to the end times. Topics are Time Travel is Possible, Threats that can only be explained with time travel. Heaven is outside of time. What is time? Time travel found in the Bible. Two lies of Eden, a counterfeit eternal realm. Ancient knowledge from the past and the Tower of Babel. Daniel 8 and the Nazi time travel technology. The real history fulfills Bible prophecy. God's control measure in how time is a weapon. The Kecksburg and Stephenville cover-up. Saturday, June 6, 3 to 6 p.m. Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? Can this be compatible with modern plate technology and science? Lazarus and the rich man. Where was Cain sent? Where is paradise and Eden related to Abraham's bosom? Where did Jesus go after his death? Where do demons live and how did they get there? How does CERN, the Devil's Triangle, and the Dragon Sea relate? How does the Nazi expedition and claim of an alliance with, quote, pure Aryans play into this? Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? That's Saturday, June 6, 7 to 10, 30. So that is four meetings, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, June 4, 5, and 6. A gift of $10 at the door for each meeting, but the best deal is take advantage of our summer blowout. Single DVD, gift of $30. Two, gift of $50. Four, gift of 85. That's 21 each. Seven, gift of 120. That's 17 each. Ten, gift of 100. That's $10 each. 20 DVDs, gift of $160. That's only $8 each. But you got to call 785-266-1112. Offer expires soon. That's 785-266-1112 for the summer blowout gift offer. All meetings are at the Prophecy Club, Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the water. Burger. That's 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the Waterburger on the corner of Park and K, like the Marjorie. And I look for you at the meetings.